Warning: Chlorine is toxic. Iodine monobromide is lacrimator. This video is for educational purposes only. You probably have heard about the halogens. No, not these halogens. I mean the ones from the periodic table. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and the other two dots no one gives a shit about them. They all have one thing in common. They are diatomic molecules. However, chemistry allows us not only to pair two atoms of the same element, but also to make diatomic molecule containing two different atoms. This way we can make custom halogens by combining the known ones. For example, iodine monochloride, which I'm gonna be making in this video, has a lot of the same properties as bromine, although it doesn't actually contain any bromine atoms. So prepare for a very interesting synthesis because in my opinion this is one of the most beautiful chemicals I have ever seen. To make iodine monobromide we just need to react chlorine with iodine. This is the apparatus that will allow us to do so. In the right I have a chlorine generator ready to be charged. The produced chlorine will travel down the tube to the drying flask where it will be bubbled in some concentrated sulfuric acid to remove any moisture. Keep in mind that iodine monochloride is specially reactive towards water and any of it present will reduce the yield. The dried chlorine is then passed in the 3 necked 100ml round bottom flask where it will react with the iodine. The central neck of the flask is equipped with a reflux condenser to catch any vapors that come off. And finally, to keep all the moisture away, the top of the condenser is equipped with a calcium chloride tube. I start off by charging the reaction flask with 30 grams of iodine. Then I lubricated the glass joints with some concentrated sulfuric acid. As I said earlier, iodine monochloride acts a lot like bromine, so it will manage to escape even through the tiniest cracks. The chlorine generator flask is charged with 10.6 grams of potassium permanganate. The funnel on the top was filled with 50 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. When everything was ready, I slowly rotated the stopcock, allowing some of the acid to dip in the permanganate. Immediately, a vigorous reaction followed, which you can tell by the rapid bubbling in the drying flask. It is important to pass the chlorine as close as possible to the surface of the iodine, otherwise it may not react as efficiently. I accomplish this by dipping the glass tube from which the chlorine is released under the iodine. When the two halogens finally came into contact, a rapid reaction took place. The gas phase in the flask started to get browny as the product is formed. Soon the iodine started to liquefy. It is not actually melting since the reaction isn't that exothermic. It is dissolving in the iodine monochloride forming on its surface. As I said, the reaction is probably the most beautiful I've done, so I'm gonna let you enjoy it. The yellow stuff you see in the walls of the flask is iodine trichloride. It is the main product when the reaction is done in excess of chlorine, but small amounts inevitably form anyway. One very interesting thing that I noticed while I was editing this video is that in the flask there is a fire. Yep, you heard it. I'm going to slow down the footage so you will be able to see it. This is a flame, ladies and gentlemen. A chlorine one. Everyone knows that in order to have fire, you need oxygen in the atmosphere. However, if you know chemistry on a decent level, you probably know that oxygen is not the only element that can set things on fire. 
fluorine, chlorine and even bromine can do this trick too. In this case, we are burning diodine in the chlorine atmosphere. The interesting thing was that the flame wasn't nearly as hot as you might expect. In the end of the reaction, the temperature of the flask was so cold that I was able to touch it without burning myself. When no more chlorine was produced, I disconnected the inlet tube from the flask. Then I arranged the flask for simple distillation. However, there is a small catch here. Iodine monochloride boils at 97 degrees Celsius but freezes at 27. If I attempt to distill it through the condenser running cold water in it, it will freeze and never make it to the flask. That's why I stopped the water and heated the condenser with my heat gun until the water in it was warm to the touch. This way the condenser will be cold enough to condense the vapors but also warm enough not to let them freeze. When the right temperature of the oil bath was achieved, diodine monochloride started to slowly climb to the distillation head. When it got past the condenser, I heated the vacuum adapter so it won't freeze there. This is my final yield of 33 grams of iodine monochloride. This corresponds to a percent yield of 86. It froze very quickly in the flask since the ambient temperature in my lab was about 10. Iodine monochloride is best stored in ampules, so now I'm going to show you how to seal one. Firstly, I had to melt all of the solid with my heat gun. Then I heated both the pipette and the ampule. If I don't do this, the stuff will just freeze in there, making the transfer step impossible. At one point, even with this preheating step, diodine monochloride started to solidify in the flask, so I had to melt it again. To seal the ampule, I put it in the flame of my torch. It's important to constantly rotate the glass to ensure even heat distribution. When I felt the glass was soft enough, I pulled the top part with my pliers. The final step was making a well sealed top without sharp edges. This was done by placing the top part of the ampule in the flame. A simple test to check if the ampule is sealed correctly is to invert it and drop its edge on a paper towel. If there is any leak, it will leave a mark on the paper. Mine didn't, so it must have been sealed correctly. In the ampule, you could see how much this chemical reminds of bromine. I left the ampule for 30 minutes and when I came back all of its contents had frozen. Not only that, but the compound was all over the walls and I wasn't able to see the inside. To show you how the crystals looked like, I melted the thin layer which had formed by evaporation inside the ampule. When I tried to melt the solid stuff, I accidentally cracked the ampule. Fortunately, the crack was on the top part so I could easily fix it with my burner. And that was all about the synthesis of this beautiful chemical. Give it a thumb up if you like it and don't forget to subscribe to see more such videos. Also, if you like the halogens, 
you might be interested in my bromine video, so go check it out.